Okay, it's time to start. So first of all, uh, thank you very much for attending this session. Uh, let me introduce myself briefly. I am Hirofumi Noguchi from NTT Corporation. NTT Corporation is a telecom operator in Japan. This presentation introduces OpenStack Taka and its functionality for managing VM and containers. Our presentation consists of three topics. First of all, I introduce the overview of Taka project. And then I'll explain life cycle management for VM and containers. And finally, today we'll show the demonstration of free 5GC life cycle management by using Taka. Let's begin from the first topic, the overview of Taka project. Taka is an official open stack project that builds a generic BNF manager based on Etsy management and orchestration architectural framework. Etsy NFW is a standard working group for realizing network function virtualizations. Taka is compliant with the Etsy standard interfaces, and it enables operators to deploy and operate network services and virtual network functions on an NFV infrastructure platform. In addition, Taka community is now trying to contribute to OLAN SC. OLAN SC is a OLAN Alliance working group to create a working software solution to enable an open and intelligent 5G radio area network. Before we dive into the more details of the Taka's functionality, let me explain the it's the manual architecture briefly. It's the NFV defines the manual architecture. It enables network operators to manage virtualized resources in their infrastructure. This figure shows the manual components. NFVO is a top layer orchestrator. It manages the whole of network services. And BNF manager is a second manager component. It manages virtual network functions. And BIM manages an uh, infrastructure named as NFVI, defined in its NFV. These components are connected by the Etsy standard interfaces and uh, OpenStack, Nova, Neutron, and HIT, and so on are mapped to BIM. And as I mentioned before, Taka is mapped to BNFM. So Taka manages the life cycle of BNF, uh, including operations such as instantiation, termination, scaling, healing, and so on. And it's according to the request from BNF or NFVO by using the standard APIs defined in Etsy standard. And Taka enables operators to manage virtual resources and to use of various beams and BNF software uh, supporting the H standard APIs. I'll explain the three advantages of Taka as a generic BNFM. Generic is a keyword of the Taka project. So it can reduce the BNF verification cost from specific systems. Currently, many network operators, including our NTT, have uh, individual systems for services. So that means uh, we require uh, specific BNF managers for each system. It causes the uh, biggest uh, verification cost. So it means uh, it takes a lot of time and a lot of human operations. However, you, by using the Taka as BNFM, the cost decrease because uh, many types of BNFs and uh, various types of beams can be managed by Taka in uniform manner using the Etsy standard APIs. And the second advantage is that uh, Taka is open source software. So it means uh, anyone can use it and anyone can develop and customize it. It's a great benefit for network operators and uh, software vendors. And the third advantage is VNF vendors can verify the interoperability of products with its NFV interface quickly and low cost. So by the, these advantages, 
Taka provide a great benefit, not only network operators, but also the BNF software vendors. And I'll explain the two features of Taka as a generic BNFM. So Taka has extensive software architecture. One important feature is a framework named as InfraDriver. InfraDriver is a kind of plugin that enables Taka to connect to various BIM products. So if only preparing the corresponding InfraDriver, Taka can connect uh, any types of beams. And actually, now Taka works with OpenStack Heat to support beam lifecycle management and also supports the uh, Kubernetes and it can manage the container lifecycle management. And again, if only preparing the infra drivers, so Taka can connect uh, any types of beams, so the development cost is very low. And the other feature is uh, related to automatic configuration for BNFM. The configuration for BNFM is uh, also the issue for network operators so because the uh, telecom systems have uh, complicated configurations for each BNFS. Taka can support the framework named as management driver. Management driver is a framework. It runs the BNF specific script to configure BNF in lifecycle management. So if only preparing the management driver script, operators can configure various types of BNF software automatically in BNF lifecycle management, uh, such as in such or uh, scale out or so on. These are the great features of the Taka as a generic BNF. From here, I'll explain the lifecycle management for BM and containers by, uh, by the Taka. So there are many types of virtualized configurations in the network operation systems. Network function virtualization has not been mature yet, and network operators may take a hybrid platform of containers and VMs nowadays. The figures on the left side shows the containers on the bare metal machine, and the next shows the VM on the bare metal machine. Taka can support both uh, configurations to both platforms. And also, Taka can support hybrid platform with container and VMs. This platform shows the containers are running on the container platform, and the container platform are installed in the virtual machines. Taka manages both virtual machine and above layer containers by using the same HD standard APIs. I explain it in more detail by using the example of scale out scenarios. In these scenarios, container platform are installed in the virtual machines and BNFM receives the scale out BNF request by using the HD standard API. In this case, Taka operates the uh, OpenStack Heat, uh, and uh, OpenStack Heat creates the BM by using the Nova and the Neutrons. And once the BM deployment becomes complete, Taka installs and configures the container platform on it automatically. And then, Taka receives the uh, instant CNF request. CNF means the container uh, containerized network functions. So Taka deploys a container on scaled container platform using Kubernetes APIs. So Taka enables operators to perform consistent management from the container cluster to the container itself running on the cluster. This is a simple scenario of supporting it by the Taka. And Taka also supports the other seamless management scenarios for containers and VMs. For example, scale in or heal is uh, uh, supported scenarios. So in this case, when container platform node VM is deleted, the container is recreated on another node VM by Kubernetes functionality, so service uh, does uh, not be interrupted. And as a future function, 
we are considering automating the cooperation process between containers and VMs, such as the termination of the container platform VM linked to the container terminations. And we are now developing the such scenarios and uh, uh, develop the attack as more flexible and uh, useful software. So from here, let's move on to the next topic, demonstration of free 5 c lifecycle management. Let me say speaker to my colleague, uh, Masaki Ueno. Okay, hello everyone, or oh, good talk. My name is Masaki Ueno from uh, NCT. Uh, from here, I'd like to show you a demonstration of free 5 c lifecycle management with Tucker. In this demo, uh, we'd like to show an example of deploy and operation uh, scenario of Fleet 5 CNF on Kubernetes VNF. The, uh, uh, the picture describes the uh, simple architecture on this uh, demo scenario. And the Kubernetes VNF, is, uh, Kubernetes VNF consists of two components, you know. Uh, first one is uh, Kubernetes master, and the other is uh, Kubernetes worker. <coughs> and the uh, Flay 5 ZC CNF uh, con uh, contains a lot of pods, uh, but in this demo, you, uh, I think you should know that uh, there are uh, uh, Flay 5 ZC control plane nodes such as uh, AMF or SMF, and uh, user plane functions such as UPF, and there are the Flay 5 ZC components and management functions such as MongoDB or WebUI. And this is for you, only for your information, but you may know that uh, there are, I mean, this is a 5 c network architecture, and a packet sent from or sent, uh, sent from or sent to you uh, user entities uh, sent through the uh, radio access network and user plane functions and other components. The above is the control plane nodes such as uh, that <coughs> managing uh, control signals such as the session functions or uh, user account functions. Now, uh, user account information, sorry. And we, uh, in this demo, we, use, we will use yeah, UEs and uh, let you access networks for UE lancing and simulator. <coughs> uh, to achieve the uh, deployment of Play 5 c on, uh, on Kubernetes VNF, uh, let's start with the, uh, instantiating the Kubernetes VNF <coughs> on bare-metal computing machines. Uh, in this step, uh, the Kubernetes master and the worker will be uh, created on the uh, OpenStack Beam as VMs and be registered as a Kubernetes Beam in TakaDB. Okay, let, let's see the, uh, the movie. Okay. Let's see the... Sorry, please, please wait a minute. Okay. Maybe this is uh, the good solution. Okay. Oh, this one. Maybe the. Okay, here. Uh. Sorry, wait a minute, please. And I'll show you the. Yeah, this one. This is a good solution. Okay, let's see the demo movie. And uh, first, operators must check VNFT ID, which uh, shows the identifier of uh, template of Kubernetes VNF. And this is a UID that represents VNFT ID of Kubernetes VNF. Then, <coughs> uh, instantiate VNF with appropriate parameters. A parameters contains what kind of uh, deployment should we have or what kind of files we have to use. And it takes about 20 or 25 minutes because there are a lot of processes such as uh, booting VMs and uh, configures uh, VMs such uh, for the Kubernetes VNF with kubeatom. <coughs> and after the, uh, all operation is completed, you may see that the Kubernetes VNF, uh, status of Kubernetes VNF is in instantiated state, and the uh, instantiated operation itself is completed state. Oh, this is, uh, that's all for the uh, Kubernetes uh, instantiation. Okay, then. Okay, uh, 
Okay. <coughs> then next step is the instantiating prefers this in, uh, on the Kubernetes VNF. In, uh, in this demo, the operator first configures port, port sets on new, uh, neutron controller because uh, there are limitations in the prefaxis implementation or Tucker uh, functionality. <coughs> you can see, uh, after this, the operator can uh, instantiate the CNF on uh, Kubernetes VNF as the same as the, uh, I, we did in the previous step. <coughs> and you can see, uh, Maybe you can see that uh, status of CNF uh, with the kubectl command. So uh, let uh, and okay, <laughs> let's see the uh, next uh, demo movie. <coughs> okay. Then. Okay. Let's see the. The movie. Okay, in this step, uh, operator configures the uh, port setting on neutron co uh, for connected uh, connected ports. And then operators can uh, instantiate free five six CNF with appropriate parameters. Uh, uh, we did uh, with the same the previous step. And the below window shows the results of kubectl with watch command. You may know, uh, you may, uh, know the uh, status of ports. Five uh, CC ports are being deployed on Kubernetes beam, so they, such as uh, UPFs or SMS are in learning state. After a while, the all ports are in learning state. So that, uh, that's all for the uh, Kubernetes beam. <coughs> sorry, uh, free five CC SNF. Deployment, and you may see that uh, state of CNF is in instantiated state, and its operation is completed. <coughs> and after all, you may uh, we, we like we have to check the uh, connectivity of 5GC, and before that, uh, we have to register your information on the uh, 5GC network, and then check connectivity from a uh, smart uh, UE. You may see the uh, logs of ULAN SIM in, as like this. The GTP packet is sent from UE to uh, external networks. So that now UE is connected to the 5GC and the GTP packets correctly sent uh, for 5GC. Okay, then. Uh, okay, then the uh, <coughs> next week, uh, we, from here, we would like to uh, show you a, a sample operation that uh, needs scale out of uh, CNF or VNF components. First, if system loads or worker node uh, increases, of course you have to uh, increase the capacity of work, uh, worker nodes. So operators sh uh, will be needed for increasing uh, system capacity by uh, increasing number of worker nodes. In this demo, uh, Tucker operates scale out operation for a Kubernetes VNF triggered by a scale out operation from uh, external clients such as uh, users or maybe in the terms of its NFV, uh, NF from NFVO. Then the uh, demo movie is like this. Okay, this is a so simple process. So execute scale out CL command with parameters. But we, uh, we, we have to mention about the uh, parameter, uh, details of parameters. In, of course, you know, uh, there are two directions for uh, scale, out, scale operations. One is scale in, that uh, decreases the number of instances. And the other is scale out, that uh, increasing the uh, number of instances. So in this demo, we have to, uh, we have to Specify the direction of scale uh, scale out, uh, scale operation. So the type is scale out, <coughs> and the other uh, impo important uh, parameter is aspect ID. Aspect ID is the specifier of uh, what what kind of instances have to uh, to be targeted of scale uh, scale operation. 
So in this, uh, in this demo, the aspect ID is worker instance. So that uh, it describes that uh, we have to, we, from here we, we uh, operate scale out operation for worker instance. <coughs> so maybe you can see the uh, status of Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes cluster by, by uh, Kubernetes shuttle get nodes. So after uh, the operation is completed, you may see that uh, the new worker is added to uh, Kubernetes cluster. And it's in ready state. <coughs> so after we check the status of new worker node, we can see the uh, op operation state uh, of this uh, scale out operation. Okay, you may see that uh, the scale out, scale operation is in completed state. Okay, the next scenario is scale out of uh, five DC CNF instances. And uh, suppose that we, uh, the system load of user prime function in the UPF increases. So operators uh, will be needed for increasing the capacity of UFPF itself. <coughs> so in the demo uh, scenario, we will like actually show that TAC operates the scale out for UPF instance, instance with the uh, um, same manner I, uh, I showed in the previous step. Okay, then the, uh, before the uh, operating scale out of UPF, we, uh, we have to, uh, we also have to uh, configure the network, uh, neutral network, because uh, the same, because the same reason from the, in the Kubernetes, uh, sorry, phase five C CNF instantiation. Okay, let's see the uh, demo. Okay. Okay. So the, uh, I explained before the uh, before since Skyward operator must configure the port sets. Uh, on a neutron controller. Then executes uh, scale out cell command with parameters. And in this step, sorry. Okay. So in this step, we, uh, we, uh, we specify the scale type as a scale out. And the different point is aspect ID. In this operation, we have to, we would like to only scale out UPF uh, UPF components, so we, we have to specify UPF aspect as aspect ID. Then after a while, maybe you, ha you can check, uh, see the, okay, new UPF is uh, created on, uh, new, uh, on another worker. In this scenario, we, ha uh, we, we already ha uh, have done the scale out Kubernetes worker, so we, uh, we, we make a new uh, UPF component on the newly created worker. Okay, you, you may see that uh, the new, uh, new UPF is created on worker 230, which is created the previous step. <coughs> um, this is the uh, application model, but in the current implementation, we have to re uh, reboot the uh, existing SMF port because we, we, have to, uh, we have to register the new UPF to uh, the existing SMF. So in, uh, in this step, the uh, SMF is terminated and new SMF is created. Okay, this is the, uh, the, uh, the completed uh, scale out of UPF. <coughs> the uh, scale, out, uh, scale operation is in completed state. And after uh, the, in, in this video, we, we omitted the process. But after all, we, we can check the connectivity of UE Lansing as, uh, as, uh, as we did in the instantiate state, instantiate uh, process. Okay. Okay, that's all for the, uh, today's presentation of uh, talk, uh, talk community. Um, <coughs> Uh, we show that Taka is an open stack project for providing generic BFM based on HTML framework. And Taka provides a consistent way to manage both BNF and CNF for hybrid platform, hybrid, I mean the containers and VMs platform. And in the future, we are now planning uh, enhancements and new features for feature development. And uh, 
build two items are very challenging for us because the accelerators for VNFC NFC is required for the new, uh, new use cases such as uh, VLAN or ORAN uh, uh, implementations. And also, we are, we are now only focusing on life cycle management, so instantiating or scaling out, and scaling in or heal or terminate. But the, in the future, uh, operators have to uh, operate the various scenarios such as the performance management or uh, fault management. So we, uh, we are now uh, considering and uh, investigating, investigating about CNF auto healing with Prometheus. <laughs> and finally, we are now uh, looking forward to your target trials and its feedbacks, and of, of course, the, your contributions to Taka project. Okay, thank you for listening uh, for our presentation. If you have any questions, uh, <laughs> because we are not good, so good at English, so please come here and talk with us. Okay, thank you for listening. Yeah.